Thank you for the introduction. Uh, this is uh, my time work with uh, Nishan uh, Chandran, uh, Rafael Ostrovsky, and uh, Ivan Visconti. Uh, this is the work uh, done by while I was uh, at UCLA. So let's start with the MPC, which we probably have seen uh, several times in uh, this conference already. So we have a number of parties, uh, each with uh, their own input, and they want to jointly compute uh, some function uh, based on this input. So uh, they want to hide uh, their own input from other parties, so basically they will exchange some uh, messages in order to compute uh, the output of uh, the function. Uh, and uh, there's also an adversary that uh, will corrupt uh, some number of, of uh, parties and uh, try to uh, steal the input of uh, the honest parties and tr or try to uh, make the uh, computation uh, fail. So in this work, we uh, consider uh, a malicious adversary where um, the adversary can make uh, the corrupted party uh, divert from the protocol. Um, and we also consider the uh, UC security. Um, Sorry. Thank you. Uh, in this work, we consider the UC security, uh, which is a very strong uh, notion of uh, security. Unfortunately, uh, UC security cannot be achieved uh, for some uh, functionality in the plane model. So we consider uh, an MPC uh, with a trust assumption. So here we have uh, some trusted party to generate some, uh, uh, some setup uh, for the parties to use uh, for the MPC. Um, for example, um, we can have a common reference string uh, which uh, all the parties has access to, and then uh, they can use that to uh, compute the message uh, for the MPC protocol. Uh, another as, uh, trust uh, assumption that we uh, focus on in this talk is uh, the tamper-proof uh, hardware token. So here, uh, a party uh, will come up with um, a program P and then embed it in that token and then send it to another party. So uh, the receiver uh, of the token can uh, execute this uh, program P on any input uh, they want as many times as they want uh, without the knowledge of the I mean, without uh, the sender knowing uh, anything about this input or about the execution. At the same time, uh, the receiver will not learn anything about the, the description of the program P. Uh, and uh, multi uh, and um, a number of uh, parties can uh, construct this uh, token and then uh, send them around to uh, execute the MPC protocol. So uh, this is uh, the tamper-proof hardware token model uh, by CAS. So um, formally, uh, there is a token functionality uh, that a pro uh, when, when a party wants to create a token for a program P, uh, he will send uh, a message to the token functionality uh, with the description of the program P. Uh, the functionality will mem memorize uh, this uh, description, and then um, the receiver uh, can ask the functionality to execute um, program P on any input X he wants. And then uh, he will receive uh, PX in return. Uh, the problem is that uh, in, in real world, uh, how do we actually create this uh, temper-proof hardware token? So uh, ideally, uh, we want uh, the standard of uh, a token to come up with a program P and then manufacture it, uh, the token himself, right? So in this case, we can just uh, create, uh, create a token and then send it over to the receiver. Uh, in reality, um, not everyone can actually create a temper-proof token, right? That's not something that uh, we can do uh, by ourselves. So uh, we use uh, a third-party uh, manufacturer to create this, uh, this token. So um, the sender will send uh, the description of P to the third party uh, manufacturer um, and then receive a token to send to the receiver. The problem here is that um, the third party manufacturer may be corrupt, right? So um, in this case, uh, 
the corrupt uh, the adversary can learn uh, the description of P uh, that is sent uh, to the manufacturer. And uh, he can also uh, collude with the receiver uh, to break the, uh, the security of the trust setup, uh, which is the uh, temper-proof hardware token. Um, the sender may need to choose uh, among uh, many uh, hardware uh, manufacturers uh, which one he can trust, which one is, uh, and which one are corrupt. Uh, another problem is that um, the, uh, the corrupt uh, manufacturer can also replace um, the, the program P with a different program to uh, undermine the, uh, the computation of the MPC. So uh, the question that we would like to answer is, uh, can we obtain the UC uh, security hardware-based uh, security in the world uh, where most hardware token manufacturers can be corrupt? And our answer is yes. So we construct a protocol that uh, UC relies uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the temper-proof token functionality with a board uh, in the corrupted token model, assuming uh, the existence of a one-way function. So this is our main result. And we need to explain uh, what is uh, the, fun uh, the token functionality with a board and uh, the, corrupt, uh, the corrupted token model. So um, this is uh, the setup uh, uh, that we are interested in. Uh, we have um, several um, manufacturers, some of uh, which can be uh, maybe corrupt, and some of uh, manufacturers are honest. But uh, both sender and receiver doesn't know uh, which one uh, is corrupt. So um, when the, um, the sender want to uh, send a token uh, that embed a program P, uh, he will uh, create um, a bunch of programs. Uh, P1 in this uh, example, P1 of two, P5. Each of which, uh, each of which uh, doesn't review uh, the program P by itself. Um, and then uh, he will send uh, each one to each uh, manufacturer and then receive a number of uh, tokens, uh, some of which can be corrupt. And then send all of them to the receiver. The receiver will use uh, all these tokens uh, and then uh, exchange uh, and then execute them uh, in a way that uh, he can get the output px. And this, this will be our model. And uh, it's also possible that the receiver uh, is, uh, is also corrupt and collude with the, uh, the corrupted uh, manufacturer. Uh, in this case, we still want to guarantee that uh, P is still hidden. So essentially, um, we want, um, we want uh, a guarantee that uh, if at least one manufacturer is honest, it's not corrupt, then um, the adversary cannot learn anything about P. And we can see that uh, if all of them are corrupt, um, then um, the adversary can actually compute, uh, can, uh, can learn all the description and then compute, uh, and then uh, the description of P. Um, on the other hand, uh, there is a limitation of this model. Basically, um, say, suppose uh, the adversary corrupt all but one uh, manufacturer, say P2, uh, say the, the second one, uh, which, uh, the sender sent P2 to, and then just replace uh, the, uh, the program with garbage. Then uh, what happens is that uh, if we want to realize uh, the actual token functionality, that means uh, P2 by itself must be able to compute P, right? Uh, at the same time, uh, the adversary can actually uh, corrupt the manufacturer that will get P2. In that case, uh, that means that P2 by itself can compute P, but not review P, which, uh, which is essentially uh, a black box obfuscation, right? So, um, and because we cannot have that, uh, that means uh, we allow that uh, in that case, uh, all we need uh, is that uh, the, the token creation uh, is going to be a failure as a whole. And in this case, uh, we, can, we can say that uh, the receiver, we cannot define in abort. And that's, uh, that's essentially uh, the token functionality with a board. So uh, here it's very similar to the standard token functionality. Um, 
we have uh, the sender, uh, the sender uh, send, the send the message to the, the functionality to create a program P, uh, to create a token with program P. Uh, but the token functionality instead will uh, notify the adversary first. Uh, the adversary has a choice to interrupt uh, this creation. So in that case, uh, the receiver we can notify that uh, the token creation is, uh, has failed and uh, he will not be able to execute uh, P on any input. Uh, the adversary can also choose to ignore uh, this creation and then uh, in this case, uh, just like the standard token functionality, the receiver can execute uh, P on any input X. And uh, this is uh, the, func the functionality that we want to achieve uh, in uh, the corrupted token model. So what is the corruptible uh, token uh, functionality? So here is also uh, pretty s here also start off pretty similar. Uh, we have uh, the sender the sender want to create a token for a program P. So uh, the adversary will get notified, but instead of uh, just uh, interrupting. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, in the previous model, the, uh, the token functionality with a board, uh, the adversary will not know uh, P at all. But in this case, uh, if the adversary choose to corrupt this, uh, this creation of the token, he will actually get P. And then he can replace P with uh, any, uh, any different program, P, P prime, or the same program, uh, if he want. And in this case, uh, the receiver will not get notified uh, at all. And when he execute, uh, when he thinks that he execute P on input X, he will get uh, P prime back instead. Uh, the adversary can also choose to ignore uh, the creation, and in, th in this case, he will not get uh, P at all as well. So um, the corruption uh, is done uh, one, uh, one by one. So uh, if the sender uh, construct, um, try to create uh, multiple tokens, uh, the adversary can choose uh, to corrupt uh, some root token, but not the others. Uh, and then uh, he cannot change his mind later. So after, the, uh, after he choose not to corrupt a token, say P2, he will not be able to uh, uh, change his mind later in the protocol to corrupt P2 again. So P2 is now actually temper-proof. So this is the model that we want to, uh, that, uh, that our protocol will, uh, will be in. And we want to achieve the, uh, the token functionality with the board in this model. So uh, here is the, uh, uh, the, overall, uh, the overview of our solution. So uh, let pi be the description of the program P. So um, the sender will uh, use uh, n of n secret sharing to uh, create uh, the share of program P, uh, of, uh, of pi. Basically, uh, he will get uh, pi one up to pi n, when n is the number of, uh, number of tokens uh, he, he wish to, uh, to create to represent a single uh, program uh, pi. Basically, he believed that uh, this, uh, among this uh, n manufacturer, at least one of them will, uh, will be honest. Uh, and then he will create a correlated uh, randomness and then uh, embed it into uh, the token, uh, uh, in this example, uh, five tokens. So each of the token will get uh, the secret share of, uh, of, uh, of pi, and then together with the correlated randomness, uh, to do some computation. Uh, the receiver, uh, when he wants to execute, uh, P on in, uh, execute pi on input x, he will give uh, x to every token. And then this token will perform some MPC among each other. So uh, the receiver will be the one who deliver the message between the tokens. And this can be done uh, adversarially if the, uh, the receiver is corrupt. So uh, this MPC will uh, reconstruct pi from uh, n of n share, and then uh, execute uh, x uh, execute uh, the program uh, on the input x. So this is uh, the overview of uh, our solution. So how do we achieve this? Uh, there are two things that we need. 
First, um, the one ex that actually executes MPC uh, will be the token. So that means uh, we need to have some, uh, some way to prevent uh, the resetting attack. So what we need is a uh, simultaneous uh, resetable uh, zero knowledge argument in the correlate randomness model. So uh, by this, I mean uh, the, uh, the soundness guarantee must hold uh, even when uh, the prover can, uh, can reset the, resi uh, the prover can reset the verifier, and the zero knowledge uh, property needs, need to hold uh, even when uh, the the verifier can reset the, uh, the prover as many times as, uh, as uh, he wants. So this will be uh, the first thing that we need to construct. Oh, yes, this is uh, what I just said. Uh, the second thing uh, I already mentioned is the, uh, the UC secure MPC uh, for the tokens uh, to, uh, to run. And this will also be in the correlated randomness model. So we can combine, uh, when we combine this, uh, this uh, two things that we will construct, uh, we get the final result, which is the protocol that you see realize uh, the token functionality uh, with a board in the corrupted token model. And as, as I mentioned earlier, our result uh, will be based on one-way function. So we want to construct uh, each of the, uh, these two uh, using one-way function only. So uh, if you go uh, a little bit quickly, uh, because I only have uh, Eight minutes left. So uh, first, in order to construct uh, this, uh, the simultaneous resetable uh, zero knowledge argument, uh, we will start with uh, a three rounds uh, public coin uh, zero knowledge protocol in the CIS model. Uh, for example, the one by uh, McKinsey and Yang. So uh, this protocol is uh, based on one-way function and has a spring light simulator. And then uh, we will uh, switch over to the correlated randomness model uh, when uh, we also add uh, the secret, uh, a secret key for um, a symmetric key uh, encryption, and then uh, the commitment. So um, the, the prover will get uh, both a commit, a commitment message and uh, the commitment information. Uh, so we can prove uh, using uh, the zero knowledge uh, argument in the previous slide uh, that uh, there exists um, a witness uh, and a secret key that uh, can decrypt uh, the first message to the witness. So uh, this resulting protocol, uh, it turned out that uh, this resulting protocol will be the zero knowledge argument of knowledge in the correlated randomness model uh, with spring line simulator, and also and still have three rounds. Uh, in the second step, uh, we uh, generate more uh, correlated randomness. Um, basically, uh, we have another commitment in the diff in the opposite direction, together with uh, some random string, uh, which are the um, the D and the S. So the prover will uh, use the uh, the zero knowledge argument of knowledge in the previous slide, which uh, is three rounds. But instead of the second uh, the standard second uh, message, uh, the verifier will use um, the PIF to uh, to generate this uh, prompt instead, and then he will use uh, simultaneous uh, resetable witness uh, indistinguishability argument. Uh, to prove that uh, that either um, either T can be decommit uh, to S and our prompt is generated uh, this way, or there exists um, a D prompt such that D is uh, a PRG applied to D prompt. And this. Uh, uh, simultaneously uh, resetable witness uh, indistinguishability argument uh, already exists, uh, which is a work done by uh, Chang, Ostrovsky, Pass, and uh, Visconti. So uh, he, uh, if you want to get uh, the details on how uh, we prove the security here, you can uh, re re refer to the, uh, the full paper. Know that we still have a string line simulator here. So uh, the second component of uh, of what we need uh, 
we, uh, can be constructed from uh, two, uh, uh, two protocols. The first one is the UC Secure MPC in the uh, OT hybrid model, uh, which is uh, done by uh, Ishai uh, Prabhakaran and Sahai. And the second part is uh, the OT in the correct randomness model. Uh, this is essentially an OT extension, uh, but with uh, a special thing that we need to, uh, to add on here, which is uh, this is for unbound number of OT. Uh, why do we need unbound number of OT? Because uh, we will embed all this correlated randomness in the, in the tokens, right? Uh, but we do not know that uh, how many times that these to this tokens uh, will get executed. So uh, we cannot uh, expect uh, the number of OT that uh, will be used uh, that we need to embed in the token. So we need a little bit uh, modification to the standard OT extension. So here's the uh, like quick overview of the uh, Beaver OT extension. Uh, the receiver have a short seed uh, S and then uh, use the PRG to expand it to a, a long string. And uh, this string will be used to uh, select the bits from the, uh, the sender. And uh, the, the left part uh, uh, create as a garbage circuit and then send to the receiver. And the small number of OT will be used uh, to, uh, to send uh, the garbage input uh, for the short seed as to the receiver. <clears throat> so our, uh, so in the, uh, our modification, uh, the sender and receiver will have uh, some uh, short seeds, uh, S1, S2, and S3. And then uh, they will exchange some commitment. Note that uh, the upper part is done uh, as a correlated, correlated randomness uh, by the trusted uh, parties. And uh, instead of uh, the PRG, uh, there is, uh, the input, the state of the receiver together with the, the session number, which I denote by J, uh, will, be, uh, will be put through uh, the PRF, uh, which has a state of S1. And then um, the left-hand side, again, uh, is garbled uh, and sent to the receiver, uh, except that uh, in this case, uh, the receiver will only get uh, the garbled input for S2, but not J. And then uh, in, the, in the J session, um, when the receiver want to, uh, want to get a new uh, additional OTs, uh, the sender will uh, create a new garbage circuit, uh, except that uh, the part that corresponds to S2 uh, will remain the same. So he don't have to uh, use uh, the OT to send over the, uh, the garbage input for S2 again. And uh, this allows uh, the receiver to uh, repeat uh, the session uh, as many times as he wants. So, and uh, the sender also needs to use a uh, journalist proof to prove that he actually uh, compute everything uh, according to the scheme. Uh, so now we want to put everything together uh, and uh, finish uh, the pre presentation. So we have uh, a functionality f uh, which uh, take uh, the uh, the secret uh, the secret share of uh, the program pi and then. Uh, and the input x1 up to xn. Uh, if you remember uh, one of the slide that I uh, used earlier, uh, this x1 up to xn is supposed to be the same, uh, the same x, uh, which is the uh, input that the receiver of the token wants to execute. So this functionality will check uh, whether they are the same, and then uh, set it to x, and then uh, combine the secret chair to get uh, the program pi, and then uh, execute on input x. Uh, we want to put this uh, in, uh, we want to use uh, the MPC for this uh, functionality in the correlated randomness model. And then we wrap it uh, using the uh, simultaneously resetable zero knowledge in, this, uh, in the correlated randomness model. And so uh, the blue box here will be somewhat uh, a resetable MPC, but for a specific functionality here. And then uh, we break it up uh, and then put it in, into uh, tokens. So we have uh, another uh, protocol, which is a token wrapper, to wrap around uh, each uh, parties in this MPC. 
uh, this token wrapper will take care of uh, the, uh, the state of the, uh, the MPC and then uh, deliver the message between tokens. So uh, finally, uh, we have the token protocol in the uh, corruptible token model. And then uh, the final step is uh, we want to reduce the size of this token uh, to have the small uh, size uh, of the this program description and only take short input. This is also uh, an interesting part by itself. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, we have a, we define a corrupted token model, uh, which um, allow the adversary to corrupt uh, uh, would be temple proof token at the time of the creation. And uh, this uh, better model uh, the, the untrust manufacturer in the real world. And uh, what we uh, achieve is the, uh, the protocol that you see relies the temple proof token functionality with a board in the corrupted token model, assume only one way function. And we can combine this uh, protocol with uh, any MPC uh, in the temple proof token model uh, to give the MPC in the corrupted token model. And that's the end of my uh, talk. And you can uh, see the paper uh, on the print. Uh, any questions? <clears throat> um, uh, okay, uh, let's thank the speaker again.